As the development of the 1.20 update continues on, the end of an era gets closer and closer. Admittedly, the wild update wasn't the community's most favorite update, but it still had some really cool features. Big features inside of this update, like the mangrove swamp and the warden, have overshadowed the small amazing ones. And that's where I come in. Today we're going to take a look at 20 updates inside of the latest Minecraft era that maybe you didn't know about. Knowing these things will help you in your next survival world. Around the release of the update that this first change comes from, there was a lot of big hype, especially for me, about this one. I was so excited. Like a child that I once loved and have since forgotten, I completely forgot about this. The next time you're creating a brand new world, do me a quick favor and take a look at the game rules in here. Specifically, this one right here, is Snow Accumulation Height. Before creating your world, try setting it to 8. If you set this snowy game rule to a value that is anything higher than 1, snow will actually begin to pile up in your world, of course, when it does snow. And for those of you that absolutely hate snow, well, no problem. You can set it to 0, and snow will never pile up again. Also tucked sneakily inside of the 1.90.3 update is our next change on the list today. Over at the bamboo jungle, we'll go ahead and chop down a little bit of bamboo. As we all know, bamboo is getting a massive upgrade inside of Minecraft 1.20. Stuff is absolutely amazing. But inside of Minecraft 1.19.3, it actually kind of already started updating. Take a look at this scaffolding right here. If we craft some scaffolding right here and place it down and then immerse ourselves in it, by taking a look at this scaffolding right here, pretty quickly we'll realize, at least if you're familiar with this stuff, that the color changed. They updated the scaffolding's texture in Minecraft 1.19.3. Another change that this stuff went through in the 1.19.3 update is no longer a spawnable block. That's right, before, mobs like creepers, piglins, anything like that, they were able to spawn on scaffolding. But not anymore. So those are all changes from the 1.90.3 era. Let's turn the clock back even more and go back to 1.19. As we hopefully all still remember, 1.19 added frogs to the game. Now, one of the biggest mechanics with frogs has to do with this small baby slime, a magma cube. When a frog sees a small magma cube and gets close enough, it will eat it and transform it into frog light. It's actually pretty amazing. This is easily one of the most interesting ways of getting a block in survival. But that's not all that the frog will eat. Did you remember they can eat slime too? Now look, sure, sure, it's maybe not the most useful thing in the world. I mean, maybe you could use it in a farm if you're able to set up like a funnel that'll shrink the slime size for you or something. <sighs> Might be a reach. I don't know, maybe if you're living inside of a swamp or something, you'll be able to use this one a little bit more effectively. Uh, the frog could help, like, keep it clean? I don't know. What I do know is that that's three down. There's 17 more to go. Do me a quick favor and tap that like button on this video. Doing this might guarantee yourself a year of good luck. You never know. When it comes to talk of Java vs. Bedrock, it's safe to say that Minecraft 1.19 had some parody updates. Not a lot, but, but some. One of the biggest ones over on Minecraft Java was this one right here. This change expands generations, if you will, working on every single leaf in the game, including some of the newest and most beautiful additions to the leaf family. Flowering azalea leaves, waterlogged and beautiful, and here's something I bet you haven't seen before, waterlogged cherry leaf. Oh, that's nice. Continuing to move right along through our list here today, lads, we find ourselves over at a horse. What if I told you 1.19.3 made some pretty big upgrades to the horses? And I'm not talking about the breeding stuff. For the first time in a long, long time, it is now way easier to interact with horses, donkeys, mules, and almost any other rideable mob as well. If you've already tamed a horse in your world and you want to equip armor on it, all you got to do is walk up to the horse with armor and use the armor on it and it goes right on. And same thing is actually going to go for a saddle. You can quickly saddle up a horse, jump on this thing and ride off into the sunset or I guess off into a lake or something. Drown the horse. I, I don't know. I'm not the moral judge. You do what you want to do. Next up, we've got a command that I bet you forgot about. This command was added to Minecraft in 1.19. And actually, interestingly, this is a command that I think gets way more useful inside of Minecraft 1.20. It's called the Place Feature Command. Using the Place Feature Command, we're able to place any of the many Minecraft features. Now, these generation features, they include many things like basalt patches, ice spikes, spore blossoms, and grass patches. They also include fossils, and actually, also, they include the Desert Well. You can place the Desert Well with the Place Feature Command, and then you can check out the excavation stuff if you placed it right. 
You should check out this command and mess around with it a little bit more to find out all the technicalities behind it. But yeah, if you place a desert well in the correct spot, you could actually check out the archaeology excavation up close and personal, like right at home. A little hint for you. And for the desert place feature command to work, you'll need to be on sand. One of the whole points of Minecraft 1.19.3 was seemingly reworking the entire creative inventory. We've got brand new tabs, brand new organization orders, and brand new blocks inside of the inventory. One that I completely forgot about, and I think I actually missed in the 1.90.3 everything video, is the dragon egg. For the very first time ever, the dragon egg is inside of the creative inventory on Minecraft Java. As an additional bit of information, relatively recently, King B Dogs and a couple of the other devs were having a conversation about how they would love to change the model of this thing over on Twitter. What do you think? Should they change the look of it? For our next one, here we are over inside of the ancient city. Let's talk a little bit about wool occlusion, one of the most complex mechanics in the game. We'll start with the absolute basics. This is a skulk sensor. If you move around in the world, because of the vibrations that are created, the skulk sensor hears you. Now the skulk sensor will hear almost every single block placement in the game, except wool blocks. Wool blocks are way too soft to be able to be heard. If you place wool blocks down, the skulk sensor will not know. If you move onto wool blocks, once you're on them and move around, the skulk sensor will also not know. If you place carpet down, the skulk sensor doesn't hear that either. And if you move around on carpet, it will not hear you. If you separate yourself in the skulk sensor with wool and move around, the skulk sensor again, it, it still doesn't hear you. Because these mechanics can get kind of advanced, I feel like they're pretty easy to completely forget about. So don't forget them. Now, while we're inside of this city, I I'm going to throw one in personally for me because it's something I completely forgot about. I was uh, doing something recently, thinking about enchantments, working on a, a different video, and I thought enchantments hadn't been added since like 1. 1.16. A swift sneak is a relatively new enchantment that you definitely should not forget about because it's pretty cool. The swift sneak is also only found inside of the ancient city. Now look, I realize I might be completely alone in forgetting this one, but Swift Sneak, it's a legging enchantment. Grab your favorite pair of leggings, a Swift Sneak 3 book, and your favorite name, combine them all together. Once you've done that, if you equip those leggings and sneak, you will sneak way faster than ever before. <sighs> I don't know how I completely forgot about this one. It's great. When I was just a wee lad, I can remember being tricked by videos on YouTube all the time that had to do with infinite lava sources. Specifically, I can remember one that I watched that required like diamond blocks all around the lava sources for it to actually easily be able to, to like replicate and, and be infinite, you know? In the short term, I guess the scammers won the battle, but lads, we have won the war. This 1.19.3 game rule has to do with lava. Game rule lava source conversion. By default, it's going to be set to false, but if we go ahead and switch it over to true, check this out. The lava, if we... I think we have to update it. Oh, it's beautiful. It's so, so beautiful. If you're looking for lava to behave exactly as water does, then that is the game rule for you. It's another thing you should consider checking out before you create your world. We did it. We're halfway through the list. This next one, it's a little bit more of a general fact about something inside of the wild update. It's also something that for the longest time, I had no clue about and completely misunderstood. Mangrove tree. When you find or grow a mangrove tree, you're going to have propagules. It's a great idea to take those things off of it. If you're looking to grow more mangrove trees, that's a genius idea, actually, because did you know that mangrove leaves are the only leaf in the entire game of Minecraft? to not actually naturally drop any saplings. No propagules will ever drop from a mangrove leaf, unless they're actually like growing on the leaf already. But other than that, you get nothing. This next one, I romantically sent it out to the technical players out there. Fill Bio. Bio. With, With the, the addition of the Fill Biome, Biome command, command and for the very, very first time ever, you're, you're actually, actually able to able modify, modify the, the biomes, biomes inside of your world, world. in game. game. Now look, clearly before this area was nothing like a jungle, but since running that fill biome command, oh, it's a lot more beautiful. We got that green jungle grass is rich. We got a jungle villager. Wow, that's romantic. Goats were officially added to Minecraft way back in the 1.17 update. It released two years ago now. Uh, two years ago now. All right, well, anyways, the goat was added and the goat has a unique drop. To get this goat, have it smash a block and you'll get a brand new goat horn that does really nothing. <laughs> and while we were at it with a despicable goat horn, 
The Pillager Outpost is the first old structure to get an update. This thing got an update to its loot table inside of Minecraft 1.19. If you're lucky, you'll get a goat horn. This method might be a little bit easier to get a goat horn, and after that, you could then... I don't know, like... I don't know, like, uh, use the goat horn to... Sing to yourself? I, I don't know. Alternatively, something that might be a little bit more interesting you could do over at the Pillager Outpost is bring a creeper and light that creeper with a fire charge. I think I messed that one up though, so let's try it again. Place a creeper, light it with a fire charge just like that, and it will surely explode. Give it about a year or a couple updates time, and I guarantee you this next one is going to be almost completely secret. This one's kind of buried. First things first, pause the game, go to options. After that, go to controls, and then finally, the end of goal. Operator items tab. Turn it on, back out of the menus, and check out this tab, and... Well, I mean, check out that tab. Inside of this brand new creative inventory tab, you've got a lot of the technical items in the game, including the wonderful enchanted stick, every single light block item, and the paintings that actually aren't accessible in Survival Minecraft that were added in 1.19. Heading back over to the Pillager Outpost we were at a second ago. Look, this is another one I've completely forgotten about. This time though, I'm not just putting the plain old alley at this spot on the list, but I did forget about it. <laughs> and I voted for it too. Instead, what I will be putting at this spot in the list is the alley duplication mechanic that was added to the game in, I think it was 1.19.2. Ah, maybe 1.19.1. So if you've got yourself an alley and bring it over to a jukebox, have it listen to the music and dance and get happy, after it's dancing beautifully and very happy, give it an amethyst shard and it will actually duplicate. This is one of the most interesting ways at creating a new mod in the entire game of Minecraft. So far today, every single update has been about something new that we've gained in the wild update cycle. This is something that we've lost. Inside of the creative inventory, if I try to find petrified, however you spell it, uh, it's, it's not here. Petrified oak slab. For some reason, strangely, the petrified oak slab was completely removed from the creative inventory inside of the 1.90.3 update. You would think that this thing would be just moved to the operator utilities or something, but no, it's gone. Instead, if you're looking for the petrified oak slab for some reason, you're gonna have to go ahead and use the command to get this thing. Hmm, weird. Alongside the addition of the beautiful chest boat inside of 1.19, we have a very nice minecart upgrade, or actually a couple. First things first, the recipe is completely shapeless now. Previously, you had to make sure the hopper was actually going into the minecart. Now, if you wanted to, you could have the minecart going into the hopper. The same exact thing is going to go for every other type of minecart. And once you craft or find these things in your world, they are always set however they are. Meaning, let's say we have the hopper minecart, it's running inside of my farm, but I have to move it. Well, if I break this thing, it stays as a hopper minecart. The same thing for the chest minecart, same thing for the explosive minecart. And so that is 19 updates you might have forgotten about inside of the wild update era. The final one is for the new people. You see, I've been doing YouTube almost daily for six years now all by myself. And every day, the channel has grown. This next one is one that I talked quite a bit about in some of my earlier guides. This is because it's really exciting, at least to me. Step one, find yourself an ancient city. Step two, find this structure that could generate in your ancient city, and you'll get a skeleton skull. There are two places in this entire city you'll be able to find this thing generating. You'll find it generating on this pillar right here, and you'll also find it generating in that altar structure as well. That's the one with the two chests and the, uh, <laughs> the altar looking thing. There was a lot of controversy in the community during the development and after the release of the wild update. Did you like the wild update or did you not? No matter how you felt about the wild update, I think it's safe to say that because of how the devs are doing things with 1.20, the hype is like at an all time high. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope it was interesting. I'd like to send a big, big thank you to my patrons who helped make this content possible. Skelly Wampus, Jackie S, CK Michael H, and The Great Vegeta. You're the best. Next up, check out my tips and tricks playlist. If you like this one, I've got even more you'll love. I'll see you tomorrow.